Greetings to all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, this is Mazima Kenneth once again. And I want to appreciate the good Lord for this wonderful opportunity of being able to continue to share the gospel and uh, him counting uh, as faithful to continue to be co-workers with him as far as the furtherance of the gospel is concerned. I also want to appreciate him so much for each and every one of you out there for your lives your families and the work of your hands. Well, today we are doing a teaching that is to do with when sin is legalized. When sin is legalized. Now, my dear ones listening, we are living in a time where sin has been legalized and uh, righteousness has been criminalized. If you are actually very observative, you will see that what happened during the time of Isaiah is what we are seeing today. And Isaiah also made a prophecy in the time as far as Isaiah 5.20. So I just want to go a little bit onto that and uh, just show you as, as we prepare to look into the book of Romans chapter 1. So Isaiah 5.20 says, Woe unto those who call evil good and the good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. So this is a term I'm talking about. Everything has now been flipped in one or the other. What we are seeing today, that what God does not legalize, the world is now legalizing. What is supposed to be known as righteousness, it is condemned. And what is known as unrighteous, it is one thing that is now being legalized. And Isaiah said, woe unto those. The statement that is to do with woe, it's not a positive statement, it's a negative statement. There is a cry. In other words, cast are those who call evil good. Cast are those who actually call good evil. Cast are those who put darkness for light. Cast are those who actually call light to be darkness. Who actually put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Who woe unto those who are wise in their own eyes and shrewd in their own sight. Woe unto those who are heroes at drinking wine and valiant men in mixing strong drink. Now, the thing that you see in Isaiah 5.20, it's one thing that Paul actually by the Spirit went on to expound for us as far as Romans 1.18 down to the verses uh, as he was basically teaching. But if you are so very much keen, I'm telling you, my dear one, there is a number of things you heard recently how in America they were debating and discussing in their parliament what is known as the Equality Act, where the homosexuals will now be a legal group that are accepted in all societies. And if you say anything to them in one way of actually you're confronting and refuting their lifestyle it's you that is going to be actually criminalized for talking about it lesbianism and all of that that you see today it's one of the things that uh, show us that we are living in a time where sin indeed has been legalized go back to the families where all of us are brought up today and see what is happening Movies that are actually not suitable for young kids, they, are, they freely watch together with their parents. The games today that in one or the other you would see that they are not good for kids to be involved in, you see today the games that kids are watching and the games that they are playing, they all show a lot of things that are illegal, but in one or the other, those are the very things that have been legalized in our communities in, and in our societies. But this is how the scripture starts. There's a lot that we see in Isaiah happening today. The Bible also talks about those who acquaint the guilty for the bribe and deprive the innocent of his right. So, but when you look into the book of Romans 1, 16, 
if I may start from there, after Paul showing us that, uh, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You see, some of the things that I am discussing, there are several individuals that are indeed shying away from talking about uh, these matters of uh, a number of things that have been uh, legalized and uh, how righteousness has been criminalized. The language of seeker friendliness today is so very much common. That even when you say person taking a wrong direction, you fear to warn him of that direction because you're saying that I might offend him. He might not feel okay with that. Better for you to hurt people with that truth than you pampering them with falsehood. It's the truth that sets people free. It's not falsehood. But people want to just keep their friends around much as what they are doing is not right. You know, I don't want to offend him. I don't want to lose him. But uh, we are talking about important issues that uh, if you're going to keep the society in a manner where people are actually doing things in line with the ordering uh, and actually the teaching of the word of God, therefore we shouldn't be ashamed to talk about what the word of God makes so very much clear in the scripture. Paul says, I am not ashamed, uses a personal pronoun. Probably there were many people that never wanted to identify themselves with the gospel of Christ. Probably there were many people that never wanted to talk about the gospel the way it is today. Several people today are indeed ashamed of the gospel. First of all, they refuse and they reject to believe in the gospel. And then the other thing, they are those who claim to be gospel ministers but their particular thing they cannot talk about simply because they are ashamed remember the gospel is none other than the glad tidings why would a person keep quiet over something that is very good over something that will help a person to overcome actually his situation that might lead him uh, into uh, a place of eternal eternal misery so he says of the gospel of christ the gospel is all about Christ. And every time we are ashamed of the gospel, that basically means that we are ashamed of Jesus Christ. And you being not ashamed of the gospel is you not being ashamed of Christ. For it is the power, look at that. In that message of Christ, there is the power of God. So the moment you remove Christ out of what you are calling the gospel, it's not the gospel and that message is powerless. The Bible says that for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. The gospel, in it there is the power to save. And if we do not preach the gospel, there is no way how people can be saved. To the Jews first and also to the Greeks. The gospel is out for each and every man. The gospel is actually for each and every race in this world, Jews and Greeks. So, wherever you are, I want to let you know that it's the message of Christ that can save all of those that were born in sin. It's not my father's religion. It's not my auntie's religion. It's not the good works I do. It's not this, the good behavior. It's the gospel. It's the message of Christ. Many are trusting in what they are doing, but they never trust in Christ. And many have replaced Christ with their works. We are to do good because we are born again. We don't do right for us to seek to be saved. Our actions should be a byproduct of our relationship with Christ. Bible says in verse 17, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. For one to partake in the message of Christ, for one to partake in the salvation that is a possibility in Christ, one has to believe in Christ, not to believe in your own works, but to believe in a person who died upon the cross of Calvary. But after three days he came out of the world of the dead, who is now seated at the right hand of God the majesty, who shall come back the second time to judge the dead and the living. For it is written that just shall live by faith. There is a righteousness that God imputeth unto those that believe. 
But those that do not have the righteousness that God imputes unto those that believe are the ones that are now legalizing sin and criminalizing righteousness. Whether they are member of parliament, whether they are local chiefs, whether they are parents, whether they are what and what, whoever does not have the righteousness of God, it is him that is going to end up criminalizing righteousness. What is acceptable before God, allowing it to be actually criminalized and actually putting it in some sort of a custody, putting it in some sort of a prison and saying that that will not be practiced here. It speaks of the end times. It speaks of the moral degeneration that is very common with all men that come out of Adam. And yes, all of us come out of Adam, but there is a way out, and that way out is you come into a place where you repent of your sins and you believe unto Christ, because Christ is the second Adam. What fell the first Adam, the second Adam did. When actually Adam was tempted together with his wife, he fell into sin. But the second Adam, Luke chapter 4 and Matthew chapter 4, they are all very clear. When he was tempted of, of the devil, he never fell into the devil's temptation until, the, until going even unto the cross and he never denied the work that he had come to do. And on the cross he paid for our sin, for our sins fully and he, he appeased the wrath of God. In Romans 1.18, it adds in to say, For the wrath of God is revealed, meaning that the anger, the temper, the indignation, the punishment of the Lord, the Bible says, is revealed. That before any person dies, if they legalize what is sinful, God's wrath is already revealed from heaven against all ungodliness. God has already judged those people that are legalizing sin and criminalizing righteousness. The Bible does not say that God's wrath is about to be revealed. However, it says, is revealed. So if you're a judge... You're a member of parliament, you're a father, you're a mother, you are someone in a position of leadership. How are you going about things as far as your position is concerned? Are you playing your role in a way of you establishing and endorsing and acknowledging what the word of God says that should be done? Because we don't belong unto ourselves. Where we are, there is a creator who created this universe and there are particular things that he says we should live by. We are to live by his word. And there are particular things he already defined as good and those that he defined as wrong. And for you to actually carry out your leadership role very well, you need first of all to understand what has God defined as right and what is that that he has already defined as wrong. However, if you get into the leadership position, minus knowing such, you are going to end up legalizing sin and criminalizing actually righteousness, having the wrath of the Lord abiding on you. It says... For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all, not some, but against all unrighteousness. Talk about all the things that you know that is unrighteous. The Bible says God is against all of those particular things. God's wrath is revealed from heaven against all unrighteousness that includes what disobedience that includes what unholy things that includes what profanity that includes what all sort of murder that includes what sexual immorality that includes what the practice of homosexuality that includes what people being liars it includes a number of things that are to do with idolatry adultery it includes a lot of things that are to do with greediness, drunkenness, one being a swindler and all of that. But today I am telling you, my dear ones, God does not whisper. His word is very clear on a number of these ungodly things. So any sort that is to do with impiety, any sort of uh, the idea that is to do with wickedness, the Bible says, for the wrath of God 
Now we're not talking about the wrath of a judge. We're not talking about the wrath of a president. We're not talking about the wrath of your parents. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against, against all unrighteousness, all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Not the ungodliness of animals. It talks about the ungodliness and the unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in actually unrighteousness. It's what the Bible is talking about here. There are so many unrighteous things today, my dear ones, that have been legalized. But remember, Romans 5, 6 says, For when we are yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. It's only when one comes in Christ that that person will cease from being ungodly. You know why men legalize sin? First of all, they are ungodly in nature. Ungodly men do ungodly things. Unrighteous men do unrighteous things. The fact that one is not yet a believer, he's under some sort of power that just encourages him, that just continues to, to strengthen him in all things that are to do with unrighteousness and ungodliness. The good news is that Romans 5.16 says that even when we are without strength, without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. If a person that loves to do things that are to do with criminalizing righteousness but legalizing sin Jesus died for you too but if you die in that state of ungodliness uh, and as you continue we, we, in the issues that are to do with ungodly things and unrighteous things the wrath of the Lord abideth upon you Bible so very much clear unto a number of these things people holding the truth of God in, in unrighteousness Romans 2, the verse 3 says, And thinketh you this, O man, that judgeth them which do such things, and does the same, that you shall escape the judgment of God. If you legalize sin, there is no way how you are going to do what? You are going to escape God's judgment. There is no way of escape. It's the teaching of the Bible. Nowhere to hide, my dear ones listening. Some things at times are very difficult to communicate. But if it's one thing that will actually liberate people, we need to trust the Lord to give us the strength and the boldness to share them. But I'm telling you, it's because of sin that people do not want to let go by repenting their sins and believe unto Christ. Is why there is a lot of legalizing of a number of things that are ungodly, that are unrighteous, and then they end up actually uh, criminalizing all things that are to do with righteousness. Very important for us to consider some of those things. He adds in to say in uh, Romans 1.19, Because that which may be known of God is made manifest in them, Everyone that is legalizing sin and criminalizing righteousness, they know what is true. But the thing is, they have that ungodly nature. And because the ungodly nature, the resentment towards God is already on the inside of them, is where they proceed on to legalize a lot of things that are to do with ungodliness, uh, and things that are to do with unrighteousness, turning and all holding the truth of God in unrighteousness. Remember where we came from, from the book of Isaiah 5. It says that actually, woe unto those, woe unto those who call good evil and evil good. Because that that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. Their conscience keep on actually screaming to them, saying that what you're doing is not right. 
When you look in Isaiah 40, it's one of the examples that we can have that God has made people aware of his presence, but they just continue to harden their hearts. Isaiah 40, 26 says that, Lift up your eyes on high, and behold who has created these things that bringeth out their host by number. He that calleth them all by names, by the greatness of his might, for that he is strong in power, and not one faileth. The universe itself, the creation itself, speaketh unto us that there is a creator, there is a hand of God behind everything around us as far as things that were created. The stars themselves, the moon, the sun, the mountains, the lakes, the valleys, the oceans, the animals and different species of actually animals and plants all around us, they communicate that there is actually one spring being behind all of those particular things and everything he created it unique. Jeremiah 10 verses uh, 10 to 13 says, But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and an everlasting King. At his wrath, the earth shall tremble and the nation shall not be, shall not be able to abide his indignation. That is what is coming to the ungodly generation. That is what is coming to the leaders. That is what comes to the actual, a lot of individuals that are actually with the issue of uh, wanting to pass bills and a number of different things that are to do with legalizing sin. That's very important for us to understand. Acts 14, 16 says, who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. The issue of people walking in their own ways was actually one thing that people would uh, not mind about. But I'm telling you, God does not allow anyone to walk in his own ways, to do things in their own ways. There is a standard that has been set for us to follow. And the best way to know that standard is to look onto actually the writings of the scripture to know what we are supposed to involve ourselves in and what we are not supposed to involve ourselves in. My dear ones, Romans 1 verses 20 adds in to say, For the invisible things of him, for the invisible things of him, that is God, from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. People who are legalizing sin, the Bible says they are left with no excuse. Why? Whatever God created continues to scream before us that there is a creator. That is why we, when you see things that are to do with the Deuteronomy 4.19, it says that, Least you lift up your eyes unto heaven, and when you seeth the sun and the moon, and the stars, even all the host of heaven, should be driven to worship, and to serve them which the Lord your God has divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. Now, this one also speaks a lot to a number of different individuals that have legalized all the things that are known as false. People worshipping the crescent moon, people worshipping individuals, people worshipping particular mountain, people worshipping some sort, worshipping cows, worshipping snakes, worshipping a number of different things. Those are all things that are to do with legalizing things that, that, that are unrighteous. The Bible says we are known to worship anything that God himself created. Worship only goes to God, but there are a number of people today who are worshipping a number of different things. Today, we cannot miss to add in the list people worshipping money, mammon worship. Things that God created alone, they speak a lot to us. Verses 21 of uh, Romans 1. It says, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not. How did they know God? They knew God through the things he created. Swine is swine, cattle is cattle, goats are goats. There's a difference between male and female. But today, you hear the issues that are to do with the LGBTQ issues today that has become so very much common with the sex change and all of that. 
everything that God created. The Bible says in Genesis 1, it says, all of them, they were good to him. Now, when you hear people say that God made a mistake, I was supposed to be Susan, but they are calling me Steve, there is a problem. When you hear a person who says that, you know what, I was supposed to be Mark, but I'm called Jennifer, that alone just shows that there is a problem. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not. How did they not glorify God? They never glorified God by holding unto ungodly things, by holding unto all things that are to do with unrighteousness. They never glorified him not as God, neither were they thankful. So if you're a transgender, instead of you appreciating God, how he created you, then you begin actually to go into things of a sex change and all of that. We should be thankful for who we are. Thank God for your height. Thank God for your color skin. Thank God for the gender that you belong to. You're a male. You're not a female. And if you're female, thank God for that. For the family where you're born. For actually where you come from. But the things of changing what has already been defined, it's where the Bible speaks of people not being thankful. They have become vain in their understanding. Imagine, becoming vain is the same thing as being empty in your mind. All of those people you see that have gone into things of transgender thing and all of that, they are empty-minded individuals before God. There is foolishness in their minds. They love themselves more than they love God. Bible adds in to say, they have become vain in their imaginations. Vain in their imaginations. And their foolish heart was darkened. Remember the Bible says in Jeremiah 17 verses uh, 8 to 9 that the heart is deceitful. This business of just following my heart and following my heart, this is one thing that, that I love to do. Bible says, cast your burdens unto the Lord because he careth for you. The Bible says, trust in the Lord and lean not on your understanding. Your heart, your own heart can deceive you. But the knowledge of the word of the Lord will enable you to make right decisions that do not contradict the rest of, of all that which is written. Verses 20 of Romans 1, verses 22 of Romans 1. It says, professing themselves to be wise. But as they get into those things, they affirm and allege and profess to be wise. But the Bible says they became fools. You legalize anything that is sinful. God is what says that much as you profess to be wise, you are a fool. And when he talks about a fool, it simply means that's the same word which actually points to like we talk about salt that has lost its strength and flavor. If again we are to connect it in terms of the language of the salt and what we know that salt is to do, is like you become flat and tasteless. There is no virtue in you. There is nothing that any person could see good in you. Verses 23. And they changed, Romans 1, 23. And they changed, look at that. They changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into the image made like to corruptible things. Look at what is happening in Hinduism. Look at what is happening in Buddhism. Look at what is happening in Islam. Look at what is happening with what today we know as Roman Catholicism with all of their idol worships and many others. Baha'i, Confucius, and all of that. There are several ones out there turning the glory of the uncorruptible God into, the, into an image made like unto corruptible man and unto birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Legalizing sin. Legalizing things that are unacceptable before God. Exchanging the glory of the uncorruptible God into the image made like unto corruptible man. These are the individuals that are going, that God's wrath actually uh, abideth upon. Deuteronomy 5, 8 says, You shall not make you any grieven image or any, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above. 
all that is in the earth beneath, that is in the waters beneath the earth. The Bible is very clear still in the book of Psalms 115 verses 5 to 8. It says that they have mouth, the idols of men, they have mouth, but they do not speak. They have the eyes, but they do not, they do not see. They have the ears, but they do not hear. They have the noses, but they do not smell. They have the hands, but they do not handle. They have the feet, but they cannot walk. They, 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 they cannot speak. And they that make them are like unto them. So is everyone that trusteth in them. Psalms 115 verses 5 to 8 makes it very clear like that. People go into all the nitty gritties of legalizing wrong things. And they are put on market for others to buy who are actually the consumers. Isaiah 40, 18 says, To whom? Then will you liken God? Or oh, what likeness will you compare unto him? The Bible is actually, that's a question. We have nothing to compare our God unto. Forget about the movies you've heard about. That is not the true Jesus. Isaiah 40 verses 26, it talks about the, the thing that he, he, he does that no one else is able to do. Isaiah 44 13 says, The competitor stretch out his rule. He marketh it out with a line. He fitteth it with planes. And make, marketh it out with a compass. And maketh it after the figure of a man according to the beauty of a man. That it may remain in the house. Haven't you gone into some people's houses? Have you seen the idols that have been crafted? That were actually man-made? And they worship those things? Go to Japan. Go to China. Go to India. Go to many of the African countries and see what is really happening. They have their own gods in their mind that they have gone ahead to do what? To craft out the Bible and what it stops us to do is what men are actually doing. The Bible says, Thus they change their glory into the similitude of an ox that eateth grass. Psalms 106 verses 20. This is an outrageous, my dear ones, listening. And the Lord has not actually, has not actually condoned such things. Ezekiel in his, in his time he said, So I went in, I went in and saw, and behold, every form of creeping things and abominable beasts and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall ab around about. My dear ones, these are things I'm talking about that bring the wrath of God. And many of you are watching, see what is, what is now happening in Europe and America. A lot of God's judgment is actually taking place over those nations. Everything, you, you watch and you see the storms that those countries are undergoing, seriously. The landslides, the earthquakes, the tsunamis, and a number of different things that do happen. And today we have people legalizing abortion. Abortion. Killing innocent babies. Legalizing homosexuality. Corruption. My dear ones. The Bible says the wrath of God is revealed from heaven on such. Verses 24 of Romans 1. It says, Wherefore God also gave them over to uncleanness. You wonder why so many individuals that some of you might be knowing, even when they continue, even when they have an opportunity of hearing this, they just love continuing to do what they are doing. Those are individuals that are already given over to uncleanness. Through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. You get to hear of what is happening now, what happens in Denmark. Men sleeping with animals, bestiality, the Bible does not allow such. People pay money and they begin to watch men sleeping with cats, men sleeping with dogs and all of that. The Bible says such individuals are given over to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. And then you hear man sleeping with a fellow man, woman sleeping with a fellow man. Those are people that are already given over heard of the father of the, the Kardashians, Bruce Jenner now today with how he's calling himself that is now mother, uh, whatever, you know. 
changing and all of that, cattle engine and all of that. Those are people that are under God's judgment. You listen that even when he talks, we are the base of a man, but he's hiding under women's skirts. And there are so many men today that are hiding under women's skirts. And so many women today that are hiding under the men's trousers because of the sex change that they have undergone. Verses 25, he says, Who changed the truth of God into a lie, into a lie, and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Have you heard of people that are, that are worshipping this deceased guy that is known as Oobosobos? And today these things in the name of the cultural thing that people worship and give their full devotion to. But when it comes to the true worship, worshiping God in spirit and truth, they know not about. They are legalizing sinful things that have already in one way that have made them to have the judgment of the Lord abiding unto them. Those are all unoutrageous things that are unacceptable. The Bible says in the book of 1 Thessalonians 1.9, For they themselves show a manner of entering in, we heard unto you and how you turned unto God from idols to serve the living God. Whether you're a cultural leader, you're a clan leader, you're a president, you are a judge, you are an MP, you are actually a local leader and all of that. My dear ones, let us legalize things that do agree with God's written word. Because whatsoever position you are in, I am telling you, God is watching and all things you're passing, make sure that they do not contradict God's word. Important for us to, to understand. These are things that have always been happening. And people still do. He says, what profit is the graven image that the maker there has graven image, has graven it, the molten image, and a teacher of lies, and the maker of his work, trusteth therein to make his dumb idols. Things that don't talk. For thus says the Lord Amos 2 4. For three transgressions of Judah, and for four I will lie not, will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they have despised the law of the Lord, and they have not kept his commandments, and their lies caused them to err after that which their fathers have walked. Now, these are important things for us to, to actually consider. No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate one and love another, or else he will hold on to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. That's the area of actually the money thing. The area of the money thing. So, in conclusion, the Bible says in Romans 1.26, For this cause God gave them up to the and to veil affections. For even women did change their natural use into that which is against the nature. There is nothing new under the sun. It's only that some of us are just born in this world but there is nothing new under the sun. These are things God forbade people from doing. Way back, as far as us knowing, that there was a place that was known as Sodom and Gomorrah, but God burnt that place. Up to now, there is nothing that has ever grown on that land. Deuteronomy 23 verses 17 is very clear. There shall be no war of <coughs> ho of the daughters of Israel, nor a Sodomite of the sons of Israel. God rejected those things and God's word continues to say in Deuteronomy 23:18 for you shall not bring in the a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord your God for any vow for even both these are abomination unto the Lord Judges 19:22 says now as they were making their hearts merry behold the men of the city Certain sons of Belial beset the house around about and beat at the door and spoke to the master of the house, the old man saying, Bring forth the money that came into the house that we may know him. So, my dear ones, the issue 
of homosexuality, God hates it. That is why it says in First Corinthians uh, six nine, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be ye not deceived, neither fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, effeminate, nor abusers of themselves. So, we shall actually have to have a part two of this. But if you are sure you have ears to hear, please you hear what I am saying. And if it means you forsaking all of those ways and turn to the Lord, my dear ones, do that. This is very serious because it is in God's word. And I'm telling you, whoever actually continues to be appeased by the sinful things, you are actually setting yourself for God's wrath. You need to believe the gospel. Turn away from your sins. All of you leaders out there, in your different capacities, what are you legalizing? What are you endorsing? What are you teaching people? Are the things that you're teaching in agreement with God's word? Are you seeking for God's way or you're seeking for your own way? Repent of your sins and believe the gospel. That is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. And you'll have your sins forgiven. Shalom.